Hey guys, Mr. B here. So uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at um, talking about charges a bit and using some of the simulations that we have in Schoology um, just to kind of see how charges work and, uh, and the different ways that we can transfer charge. At this point, you should have read the first section of chapter 20, so you should have learned about um, where charges come from uh, and how they essentially move between different objects and static electricity. So uh, in Schoology here, we have this interactives folder. Uh, and in here, we're gonna take a look at two simulations. The first one is gonna be this John Travolta simulation. And then the second one is gonna be the balloons and static electricity simulation. So uh, let's click on this one. Okay. Um, I'm actually gonna to go to the website. There we go. So we have the full thing open here. So this is a silly little simulation, but we have this guy's little hand that you can uh, move up and down. We have his foot that we can rub on the carpet. Now, as we do this, we notice that uh, all these little blue charges start building up on his body. So right now, when we move his foot, uh, we are building a charge on his body through friction, okay? So remember that all atoms around us, everything that, that, that uh, all matter around you. So everything that you know that you can see that stuff is made out of is made out of atoms. And in those atoms, there are different particles that have charges on them. There are protons, which are positive, and there are electrons, which are negative. Okay, now electrons are the ones that are easily stripped off of things. So we can strip electrons off of material uh, by friction is the main way. So when we rub his foot on the rug, the electrons which are on the atoms that are that are in the rug itself we can we can strip them off and transfer them to his body so he starts to build up extra electrons that he originally didn't have okay now he, as he does this his body is going to become negatively charged and you'll see that they kind of move throughout his body so they kind of spread out if we build up enough charge and we move his hand towards the doorknob we can get those charges to transfer through the air, okay? So building up the charges on his foot, we are building up these charges by friction. But then when we bring his hand near the doorknob, because his body is negatively charged, it will cause the the, the charges in the doorknob, okay? So the, there are negative charges that are originally in the doorknob, and there are positive charges. When he's negatively charged, he brings his hand near the doorknob, the negative charges on the doorknob are going to get repelled a little bit because like charges repel each other, which will pull the positive charges in the doorknob closer to his body. And so when the positive charges on the doorknob are close and all the negative ones on his finger are built up, we can get the negative charges in his finger to jump through the air and transfer to the doorknob through a different transfer uh, of charge called induction. Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to build up his charge even more and I'm going to bring his finger near the doorknob and hopefully we'll see all these charges jump through the air. Uh, we should see a shock and uh, and then all the charges are going to leave his body. Okay, so let's build up this a little bit more. And there we go. Okay, so you get that transfer. Now as we saw, it transferred without contact. Right, so we didn't have to actually like touch the doorknob for that to happen. It could transfer through the air. Okay, so again, we can build up more charge, and then it gets to his finger, and it'll transfer again to the doorknob. Okay, now once it's transferred, there's no more charge in his body. So now, of course, there's there's no charge to transfer anymore. In which case, he's not going to get shocked. Um, once those charges move through his body and they go to the doorknob. Uh, as the, the might, you might ask, well, where do they go, right? They go into the doorknob and then, then where do they go after that? Um, they actually travel through, through the door and down into the ground and they disperse into the, into the ground, into the earth itself. So, um, the earth is like a giant well of electrons and atoms. And so the electrons want to make their way back down to the ground. So, um, that's, so that's what this one is on. Now, again, you'll notice that if we have his finger near the doorknob and we do this, we can get those charges to transfer really fast. However, if I move his finger away from the doorknob and I do the same thing, they don't quite 
go as quickly, right? So in order to transfer them through the air through induction, you got to have a lot of charge. If we touch the doorknob like this, okay, now in here it's not quite touching, but if we're closer or we touch the doorknob, then we can transfer the charge through the last type of transfer called conduction. Uh, conduction, conduction means direct contact, uh, in which case, because there's this direct connection between the doorknob and his finger, it's pretty easy to get those charges to move through the doorknob really fast. But again, if we're not touching, then they have to transfer through the air, which is a lot harder to do. So you need a lot more charge to build up before that will eventually happen. Okay. If we just do a little bit like this, it's not enough to transfer. It's just going to build up in his body and those charges will just essentially stay there for a while um, until he touches something and then they transfer that way. So do this one more time. All right, I like little sayings he says. So, all right, so there was the first one. Um, so we're going to see the same type of thing again, um, but just with a different uh, simulation. So let's go back to Schoology, go to Interactives. Click on the Balloons and Static Electricity Simulation. Again, I'm going to go to the website. Okay. So, again, that, that, so what we're doing here, this is static electricity. Okay. Static, the word static means non moving. So these charges are building up in one location and they're not going anywhere. Okay, now in that last simulation, they did transfer from his body to the door. So when they moved from his finger to the door, that technically wasn't static electricity anymore because the electricity was moving, right? The charges were moving from his body to the doorknob. Um, this is a better example of static electricity where, again, the charges are just going to sit in one spot, right? So this is like the classic uh, balloon example. So you have a balloon here. We'll notice, of course, that it has positive and negative charges on it. We have a sweater, which has positive and negative charges. We have a wall, which has positive and negative charges. Remember, all matter is made out of atoms. So everything around you has positive and negative charges on it. Okay? So we can build up charge on this balloon by rubbing it on the sweater. And as we do that, you'll notice that it's collected now these electrons on the surface of it. Again, this is charging by friction, okay? So we can strip electrons off of some materials and deposit them on others by friction. And when we do that, the balloon now has a negative charge on it. The sweater has a positive charge because we've stripped electrons off of it. And of course, when that happens, what do opposite charges like to do? They like to attract, right? So we can pull this balloon away and we let go of it and it will attract to the sweater. And of course, we can get more charges on here, so we can rub all these charges off, in which case now the balloon attracts even stronger, right? Because we have more negative charge, more positive charge. Now, here's here's the part that's interesting. So one, this is um, this is kind of neat because we see this interaction. But check out the wall. So if I bring this balloon near the wall, what do we notice the negative charges on the wall, right? They start to move away. So this this is we charge the balloon by friction. Okay, and uh, it's direct. It's you know um, attracted to the to the sweater. The wall, however, right now looking at it as it is, it's neutral. Okay, the the wall doesn't have a charge. All the positive and negative charges are right next to each other. They cancel each other out. It has no charge. But if we bring this balloon near the wall, we're going to notice that these negative charges move away. And when that happens, we have now charged the wall by induction. Okay, so when we do this, look, like we don't have to make direct contact with the wall. We can get these charges to move away. And when that happens, the wall is now going to gain a slight positive charge on it because the negative charges have moved away from, uh, from the balloon. And now that the wall has a slight positive charge, we can bring the balloon near the wall and we can stick it to the wall. Okay, so again, you can see that I, I can let go of it and it will go to the wall. Now, granted, it wants to go to the sweater because the sweater has more positive charge. But if I bring it just a little bit for uh, a little bit away from the wall, we can get it to stick to the wall. Okay, so that is charging again by induction. Um, in this example, there's really no charging by conduction or direct contact. These charges would have to, to have to move and they're not moving because it's static electricity. So um, let's reset this. We're going to grab another balloon in case we have two balloons now. Um, so let's grab one balloon and get some charges on it like this. Okay, it's gonna of course be stuck to the uh, to the sweater. Grab some more charges. Okay, uh, and let's grab the other balloon and grab the rest of the charges. So now we have something like this. So now, of course, we can 
repel this other balloon with uh, with the green one because of course opposite charges like to repel each other right so you notice that this yellow balloon if I let go of it it kind of wants to go towards the sweater but it can't it can't really do that very well because it's it's repelled by this green balloon because the green balloon has negative charges on it uh, if I let go of it it kind of moves away and it does if you look it does actually suck to the wall a little bit because as it moves towards the wall, the negative charges in the wall kind of get pushed away. And if we can get it close enough to the point where it'll actually stick to the wall, because by pushing those negative charges away, that wall gains a, uh, a positive charge temporarily, uh, which then will attract the balloon to it. Okay. So like I said, just a fun little simulation to play with. Um, it, you can really see how, how charges work, how static electricity works. Again, this is static electricity because the charges aren't going anywhere. They sit in place. Um, so if you want to mess with it some more, you can, uh, it looks like you're going to remove the wall, which maybe with two balloons might be easier to see with, uh, the charges on there. If there's no wall to mess with. So let's do this and we can push this balloon around. We can make it move all, all over the place again, because opposite charges like to repel each other and then, uh, get it to stick to the sweater. So, all right, cool. Um, there's also some settings down here if we want to show no charges, which would be like in real life, right? Where you can be able to see these things or we can show charge differences. Um, yeah. So, all right, that was it guys. Again, just, uh, some simulations there to play with and take a look at, and hopefully this gives you a better idea about how charges work. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.